Dallas County Health Director Zach Thompson is in with us again tonight. I know you've had a long day, a long couple of days. Oh, yes. So we sure appreciate you being here. Thank you. Let's start with this quarantine family. You actually delivered this order to them to stay in their home. You did it last night. What was that like for you, that process? Well, it's called a control order. Okay. Basically, the state health commissioner and our top doc, Dr. Perkins, signed off on the control order. We delivered it last night. I want to thank the Dallas County Sheriff Department for taking us out there. And in that process, we went up to the door, went in, and read the information to the residents, uh, the mother and the other individuals in the house, and explained to them that this control order meant that they cannot leave the residents. They cannot leave out of the apartment complex. And so this was a precaution put in place to ensure compliance. They were in agreement. They understood it. They did have some questions, but they were willing to work through this process. Let me step back once, because didn't you already tell them to stay in their home? Why did you feel that you needed to go this step to make it, I guess, legally binding? Because weren't you are, hadn't they already been told to stay here? Well, you, they were advised not to leave. That's what we tell anyone in okay. terms of these type situations. But, but there was no reason they didn't do anything that. Well, I'm going to say it this way: that it was clear that we need to be a little stringent in this whole process because of the issues and the fears out here in the public mm -hmm. and the fact that if if they did go out that would be a challenge so this is a compliance uh, process that we wanted to be clear that you could not leave out of the apartment or into the area or there would even be more stringent uh, repercussions if you do. So that was basically a precautionary measure. So I know that you heard from a, a DISD representative, school representative, that one of the kids who was told don't go to school, told a couple of days ago, actually went to school today. That have anything at all to do? Well, you did the order last night. Right. But no, did you, you it, just had a fear that, that they're not going to do what they've been advised to do? Yeah, and I did hear that. I think the, the question was maybe there was some miscommunication and the child may have just went to school and that was corrected and want to thank DISD for their fast uh, reaction to ensuring that the student left and went back home. But under this particular control order, this makes it very clear. Do not leave during the time period while we're doing the evaluation each day of those families. And it, it's really overall, because if you look at Dallas County, the residents, they are concerned yeah. and it's legitimate. It should be a healthy fear. But at this point, none of the contact investigations on the individuals that we're looking at have shown any symptoms. But this is a measure to make sure that the, the, not the county residents are right. comfortable and that our, and the individuals in the house are comfortable. Well, I, but I think one of the problems is a word you just said, a miscommunication, because all this seemed to have started at the hospital where there's a miscommunication, uh, lack of information being forwarded, then there's a miscommunication with going, going to school or not going to school, and that's... I think where some of the fears and, and the lack of trust can come from people in our community. Well, and I think, and, and what Dallas County residents need to understand is, again, we look at 24-hour TV and we see the issues of the epidemic in Africa. Right. But in terms of this misinformation or miscommunication, the, the one student that went to school had no symptoms. So the okay. short period of time they was there has no impact. It's been corrected. You have not had an issue since then. In terms of, and I can't speak to the hospital's uh, miscommunication, but I'm sure it's a lesson learned and it will not happen again. So there are some lessons learned in this whole process. All right, so take me back then to the apartment. Did you have a mask and gloves? How did you go to the to the door? I went to the door just like I'm dressed with a different suit on on last night. Okay. <laughs> you saying that to ease my concerns? No, I'm just, I'm yeah, just kidding. Right, so we went uh, because we knew yeah. that the, the residents did not have any symptoms. I went with Dr. Christopher Perkins, mm -hmm. our health director, uh, health authority, and to ensure that he could also look at the individuals and do an assessment of them. So we had a dual role. We gave them a control order. Dr. Perkins, in his capacity, went and looked and examined them. And so at that point, we were very clear that they, had, they posed no threat to us. They posed no threat to the public. Okay. And um, in terms of like what the, the apartment was like, I'm just, I'm, the, the sheets, the food, the garbage, all of those, all of those things are still in the apartment, nothing's needed to be. Yeah, let me clarify things because okay. most people are talking about some things that they're really not familiar with. Okay. When you go into the apartment, the area that they are saying the patient, I don't refer to the name based on HIPAA, but other people call it 
the individual's name. The right. patient right. basically had, was in another room. The area that the family is in is in a total different gotcha. room. So everything that everybody is describing is in another room. It's not in the area where we went into. So we didn't feel that there was any potential contamination for being in the area we were in. Okay. And so the fact that if you look at them, just like I'm sitting next to you, right. there was no, um, they were not exhibiting any symptoms. Everything was fine. And so at that point, there was no threat that we felt in this process. All right, I wanna go back to the hospital um, and just, a teachable moment, a learning moment for, for folks there at Presby. I know it's hard for you to, to speak to that, but right. just again about this mis miscommunication. And well, I think in, in terms of this process, uh, we, we, as we look at emerging diseases, as we move to e-health records now, right. this is a different process. Uh, we've even moved to e-records. There are some challenges in terms of moving from paper and pencil to e-records. Right. So I'm sure this is a process that everyone has learned from. As I stated before, I stand with Presby. They do a great job in terms of this. We will all learn from this and we'll be better in our public health system, uh, which we have an excellent public health system in terms of hospitals, clinicians in Dallas County. But from this, this is also test our ability from the state health department who is on the ground, the CDC who is on the ground here, Dallas County Health and Human Services, all working together to test what we've been trained to do over the years and it's been working effectively. So it's been a great partnership. Okay. We hate that we're the first in the country right. to have a diagnosis of Ebola, but the fact that we have a great system here I think Dallas County residents can put their fear to rest. All right, well, I sure appreciate you coming in and talking with Thank us tonight. Thank you, and I'm safe to shake your hand. <laughs> Thank you very much, I appreciate it.